The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining us here in FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow, and every Wednesday we have the opportunity to speak with the mayor of Fall River, Mayor Paul Coogan, who joins us. Mayor, how are you today? Doing fine. How about you, Keith? I am doing well. Um, I actually want to start um, with uh, something we just talked about before we went on the air. Uh, the city uh, making headway in um, paying attention to the homeless and those who are in encampments across Fall River. I guess talk about what's been done and what are some of the, the results of what's been done in terms of, uh, you know, removing people from those encampments and getting them help? Well, what we've done is, um, obviously, we, the state came about three or four weeks ago and said they wanted to uh, clean up their property along 195, which is, ends at Lewiston Street behind the old incinerator. Um, and so they asked us what our time frame was. And I said, you got to give us a, a little time to work with the people. Um, so we went in, myself and Mike Dion went in there once our FAST team, our partners from South Coast Health, and uh, a few of the other programs have all had people in there steadily now for the last two or three weeks, telling the residents when the cleanup was coming. Um, we went up there, um, I guess it was two days ago, they hit, they hit the area with a backhoe. They took out six or seven 40 yard bins of trash that they were removing all along there. They cleared trees, but um, and so I, I believe at this point, all the residents are out along the rail trail. But the good part of that was that we ended up through the hard work of the FAST team and our partners, uh, 14 of those people went to treatment. Now, we know that that's not 100% successful, but right now those people are getting the help they need to battle their uh, their demons. And it's, it's very good. We have uh, a few more that want to go home, one to New York, one to Tennessee, um, a few more waiting to go into treatment. <clears throat> so we're making a concerted push right now. We're on Brayton Avenue today with the state, our partners, to try to get some of these areas cleaned up and get people to uh, to help. People have to understand that when you go in and you tell people, we're going to ask you to, uh, to move, and if they don't have a place to go, they reluctantly sometimes will not participate in any kind of movement. But at the same time, if you offer them a program and get them into something that can help them long term, hopefully, that's what we're doing right now. It's just a push using part of uh, the ARPA money, the opioid funds, and things we can do to get people to help take care. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of that activity, as you said, has been paid for with ARPA funds. Those funds are drying out. Uh, right. What's the likelihood that something will be able to continue? I mean, I know the FAST team has been out there, you know, through all this. Are they going to be able to continue? Well, again, we, we have received that money from the opioid settlement that will go till 2035. So we're going to have right. some money coming in regularly for for opioid treatment, which is obviously goes hand in hand with mental health issues, with homelessness, with with the addiction. So we're going to we're going to use that money the best of our ability to keep these programs going for as long as we can. Yeah. All right, switching gears uh, to uh, Monday at the school committee. Uh, a lot happening uh, with the school department. The search committee that's been looking at applications for a new superintendent of schools has recommended four finalists for the school committee to uh, take a look at. There's two candidates that are local, one who currently works in the district, one who lives in Fall River, and a couple of other uh, candidates that are superintendents and I believe in East Bridgewater and in Norwood. Uh, what's the process now moving forward? I know, you know, uh, moving this as quickly, but as effectively as possible has always been the goal. So what's the next uh, next steps? Uh, the next step, well, we'll work with our partners at the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, uh, where they will, they were, they're developing some questions that are common to superintendents. Obviously, all the members of the committee will have the opportunity to send them questions they'd like to see asked at the final interviews. Um, I think we have to schedule the four people. I've heard two plans, one all at once, one over two nights. But then again, you don't get to give them all the same questions. So we're going to try to see what works best with our uh, consultants and what we've done in the past. I did a, I did one of these searches back in the day before uh, Superintendent um, Pont. We did it with uh, Superintendent Malone, where we did three interviews all in one night. So we have four finalists. and. Uh, I think we can do them all at once. Um, we will not be able to touch it this week. We have a couple of uh, 
committee people away. So that's why there was a couple people not at the meeting of the night. So we want to make sure we bring them up to speed when they get back and then discuss what they what they'd like to see in their plans going forward. But this will move along now to public interviews, uh, whether we want to go visit the districts, um, check in references. There's a lot of work that's going to go into these four candidates before they they uh, any one of them gets an opportunity to work for the city of Baltimore. And you're still hopeful to have this completed for July one or soon, absolutely. Soon That's enough? our goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Elsewhere in the uh, on the school committee on um, on Monday night uh, during public input, there were a number of uh, members of the four of educators association that uh, lent their input. Uh, currently, the school department is in negotiations on a new contract with teachers as well as the other units of the FREA uh, that I believe include. Um, therapy assistants, LPNs, and also some some administrators as well. Yeah. Um, I know speaking with the president of the FREA, Keith Michon, he's been extremely pleased with what's been happening thus far. Um, some of the uh, interest of the union is obviously an increase in compensation. Uh, Fall River does lag behind some other communities in terms of compensation. How do you view the process, on, and are you hopeful that things will be settled uh, as he is? Uh, by the time school starts uh, in uh, August, late August. No, I believe I, I, I want to settle before then because um, we have to try to attract candidates to the district. We want to make sure they know that our our uh, pay scales are competitive with other communities. That's also a big factor. Uh, there are a number of things that the committee's uh, the committee's offering to the um, union. They I know I saw it on Facebook, so I don't want to tell any tales out of school. Uh, their first offer was 12, 12, and 12. I think we counted last night with two, two, and two. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that when all said and done, we're not going to end up at either of those numbers. And uh, our partnership with the union is extremely strong. Um, and we're hoping we can get this settled up. There's uh, the initial flush of what one side wants, what the other side wants. It's I've seen this 100 times, and uh, it's the way negotiations work. Um, and what is it? it's like making uh, it's like making sausage. It tastes good when everything's done, but you don't want to watch it make it. So we'll get through this. We'll work with our partners in the FREA and the FRAA and all of our partners at AFSCME, and we'll we'll settle up these contracts in a reasonable amount of time. But like I said, we'd like to get this done because we want people to know that Fall River is an attractive place to work, a place to come and teach kids, a place to live. So. That's all important. That, those are all factors that go into negotiations. We want people to know we are trying to make our, our district competitive with the others where they are now. Yeah. Elsewhere at the uh, school committee meeting, there were some votes to um, you know, make some changes in terms, I guess, structurally in some ways, in terms of uh, how things are, are taught. Of course, the city is being asked uh, and is embracing the expansion of, of pre-K. Uh, there's been an issue, we've talked about this in the past, in terms of uh, getting uh, local sites, actually physical locations to handle pre-K. The uh, school committee voted to enter, enter into an agreement with former Bishop Conley right up the street from us to use some space there that will be dedicated to pre-K. Also, there has uh, will be a move of the school, Stone rather uh, Therapeutic School that will move from the Westall School down to in the south end of Fall River, 2501 South Main Street. And then Westall will also be converted into an elementary K through five school. So talk about how all that will work out and how it will be a benefit to parents and students in Fall River. Well, uh, the, uh, for the goal obviously is to get as many kids as we can into pre-K because that's a foundation they need for learning throughout the rest of K to 12 in the city of Fall River. Um, the move of the Stone School down to 2501, uh, I guessing we maybe we have 100 kids over there, maybe not that many at Stone, but we can use those upper floors for that. It's a new building. Those kids will appreciate it. That will clear the Westall, which is sitting in the middle of, well, or to the um, west on uh, the west side of the Fonseca district, which right now encompasses almost 1,100 kids. Um, uh, there's going to be some district lines redrawn. Um, but we can't, we don't have an elementary school that can accommodate 1,100 kids. So obviously, Fonseca kids have been getting sprinkled all over the city. We'd like to bring them to a school that's within walking distance of their home, potentially. Um, at one point, I remember we were looking at our old bus routes um, because of the uh, state limitations on how far 
kids can walk to school. Literally, they wanted to have kids walking, or they, you could have kids walking from Derby Street to Fonseca, and that's halfway across the city, and I just think that's nuts. So if we could have a neighborhood school over there where kids could walk to school, uh, it will be a smaller school modeled along the lines of Watson and Tansy and have like, I don't know, 300 kids or something, that would be better for everybody um, and take the pressure off. Also, when you start bringing kids back to their neighborhood school, that may free up space in other schools. We have funds for kids as far south as Laterno and Bavaris. Um, so if we brought them closer to their homes and um, and that, that building's beautiful, it was obviously all renovated after the, uh, the roof blew off a few years ago. So it's in good shape. Um, so we can get the kids back closer to home they can maybe walk to school. They can maybe stay after school a little longer for activities. So it's something we're looking at, and it, it, it should be a benefit to the district. Again, with the hope of freeing up space in some of these other schools where we can put a pre-K classroom, which will uh, will help us. Conley is going to be a great fit. We have uh, the whole first floor of that building. Uh, we have a gym, a cafeteria. There's a, a separate entrance around the back where the kids are going to loop around the back of the building and uh, and get dropped off. Uh, it's going to be a good stopgap for one year. Our goal is to renovate the old uh, vocational areas in the original Durfee High School Auditorium, right. and then we'll have classes there permanently. We have our Pace Center there adjoining it now. So there's a lot of moving parts. The city of Fall River is being very, very aggressive uh, with uh, with what they're doing. I mean, our, this superintendent is is leaving us July 1, but she's got the pedal to metal on a number of pro programs that are going to help kids in the city of Fall River, and I am firmly convinced of that. All right, moving forward now to uh, local tourism. Yesterday, the ribbon was cut on the new trolley. We've talked about this in the past, of providing service uh, at 12 stops, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, beginning uh, June 1st from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. across the city. can also be rented out. Later this week, I believe tomorrow, there will be uh, the unveiling of the water taxi program. Again, we've talked about that before. Um, everything's coming together, and it looks like it's going to be a big boon to help support what's happening in the city uh, this summer season. Yeah, and, and, and move our tourism along. It's funny because um, I was just talking to Sam, uh, the event coordinator, Saturday. We're going to have bird watching out in the reservation, and the shuttle is going to run four trips from the parking lot over here. Um, to take kids out that signed up to go watch birds in the reservation. So we're going to have uh, over 100 kids get on the shuttle and drive out to the reservation to watch birds in one-hour groups. And I'm like, that is just so cool that we have that kind of opportunity to both give kids a trolley ride and maybe get them interested in something else and take them out to our reservation and show them what a great asset that is to the city of Fall River. Uh, and that's sold out. It's just no room left whatsoever. That's packed, and we uh, we hope people get the opportunity to do it on the next one. But uh, between the water taxi, the shuttle, uh, the trolley, we're going to have uh, we're going to have some activity on the waterfront. We got a number of events uh, that take me to the River Festival down there by Narrows, Rock the Dock by the first. Obviously, the fourth is the biggest day along the waterfront in the city of Fall River. There's a lot of good things going on in the city of Fall River. We have our brochure, our handouts sign up for one we haven't even scheduled a drive-in or gotten to the summer in the park events which are being scheduled right now there's so much going on in the city um, we want people to uh to come out enjoy this city keep it clean and let's have a good summer in fall river yeah and it actually kicks off this weekend memorial day weekend of course is always important with a number of events recognizing our veterans and those who paid the ultimate price and now you'll be involved all weekend and it kicks off with the parade so it should be another great weekend this weekend of memorial day yeah come out and watch the parade on uh, on monday it's a great it's a great tradition in the city of fall river there's a number of events all over the city go to the website you'll see them but again that's um honoring people that made this country what it is it's a great way to start summer uh, in memory of them and all they did for us. And uh, we'll get this we'll get this going this summer and hopefully you get out this weekend. All right, Mayor Paul Coogan, good stuff going on. We'll talk to you again next week. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. All right. And thank you for joining us here on FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week.